Similar in terms of how long the game should go for them, but very different in terms of how they do it champion-wise. Bjergsen on a lot of assassins. They don't usually play the 1-3-1 unless he's somebody who's going to be jumping into the fights later. And then someday, has just been somebody where you can give him resources and he'll flourish, but you can leave him out to dry, and he's going to make an advantage out of nothing. Well, here's our first champ select of Oakland here, and you can see 100 Thieves already shutting some of that down. Akali, their first man overall in the draft. Shen will follow, kind of a target ban versus Mithy, and then Kindred, pretty standard there for TSM. Yeah, I expect something like a Rakan, potentially a Braum, and maybe a Malzahar from TSM to stop that from coming through, because Malzahar, I feel like, would shut down a lot of mid laners, unless Bjergsen's going to play something like a Zillion. Yeah, and uh, we've actually seen Ryu be extremely successful on the rise as well. He had one of the highest DPS rise games in professional play, and not going to show up here quite yet as far as any sort of mid lane priority for TSM. And the rise also allows them to play that 1-3-1 one, one that they love to kind of pick teams apart with. And that's kind of, if they aren't having Cody Sun or Carry and they have Rakara in, 1-3-1 one, one might be the way to go. Meanwhile, we thought that 100 Thieves might have even more focus on the mid lane, but the only assassin they are banning out is the Akali. LeBlanc, to me, is extremely proficient on this patch, uh, along with, of course, the Aurelia for Bjergsen. Both of these he has shown success in already. Yeah, it might be there's just too much, right? The Syndra, LeBlanc, the Aurelia that he can play, the Akali. It might just be that it's overwhelming in his champion. Maybe, but respect given to Afro on the TSM side. They ban away Braum and Rakan as their last two, as Varus joined the pool for 100 Thieves. And a first pick, Olaf, a champion that actually got banned quite a lot in the semifinals. Super good early game champion here. You can farm very quickly. You can also go for early dragons. Uh, something Tarzan in the LCK uh, would try and sneak super early on, even in his first route through the jungle. So Anda already set up with a lot of uh, possibilities here in the early game. Yeah, very early game control, very good in the early skirmishes, basically wins most two on twos, even pre level six is the Olaf. So running into him is not something that you really want to do, and he'll control with a fast pace as well as the ganks. Meanwhile, Kaisa, one of the most played for Sven and one of the most played for TSM, very successful as far as getting to the late game. They said they just wanted to have a better late game composition. Kaisa skills so well. That is going to do it for you. Yeah, and these are both kind of flexible here in terms of the Kai'Sa can go and build the AD, can build the AP, have defensive built, and the Gragas can go top, jungle, or support and support the Kai'Sa and add stacks with Body Slam and also the Explosive Cast. And I like the Kai'Sa especially because Bjergsen, if you are going to play a lot of AD Assassins, you need some flexibility in damage profile. So TSM drafting pretty standard, but I think a lot of these things make sense for them. And Aphromu, of course, in game one, he's playing Alistar. Aphromu on his birthday on, A on Alistar. Star. Meanwhile, Gangplank locked in here for Someday, and Someday has been an all-star player for 100 Thieves. Summer was such a credible split for him. He has a carry potential in the top lane, and it's going to be up to Hanser to put a stop to it. Yeah, Someday is 4-0 and zero this split on Gangplank. 19.3 KDA across those four games. He has been an absolute monster. And a lot of the times, in order to counter the Gangplank, you go towards him and camp him and put him behind. Nobody this split has been able to do that to Someday's GP. Well, instead, looks like they'll just take away that rise and move into phase two of Van Series TSM. We'll get first pick of that set of champions. Again, we talked about Ryu being very good, especially on these kind of signature picks and ones that can 1-3-1. One, one. Bjergsen, of course, an extremely proficient rise as well. So overall, this makes a lot of sense. And the next ban is Tristana. So kind of going towards the bot lane there. And I wonder if they'll ban out the Malzahar or even potentially the Cassiopeia here against the Rise, because blind picking for Bjergsen in the mid lane is something that TSM, they don't usually want to do that unless it's a pick that they feel they can ban a counter out to, or all the counters are kind of equal in power and you'll be able to run them around the map. And an interesting Tristana ban here as far as possible kill lanes for 100 Thieves. They're worried about the Alistar Tristana combo. We've seen that one quite a lot going for the early kills. However, Rakar in his four games, you know, he had the Jin, the Misfortune, the Zaya, uh, in, you know, in addition to the Kaisa. So haven't shown it quite yet. And I love this from 100 Thieves saying that may be a rise top. We've been seeing that more and more. It was seen in the LPL. And that could be something that they play up against the GP to contest barrels and make sure that they go back and forth. Haunt has already done it, so it makes sense against the team that has shown that already to take it away. And TSM are like, yeah, we're going to ban LeBlanc here, continuing sort of that solo lane theme. Yeah, and it's interesting as well because the LeBlanc, 
making sure that Ryu doesn't get this assassin champion that he's so proficient on, but also the Tristana ban was interesting to me because it's good for Rakara, but this is a very physical damage heavy composition, and Rakara is somebody who has played Swain in the past and has played this champion uh, to great effect back in the academy, so I would love to see if he brings that out here and it becomes a magic damage bottom half of the map for 100 Thieves. Interesting that they leave the option for the Cassiopeia for Ryu, though, into Bjergsen's Rise. That one, uh, plus the Zoe, have been the two main options that he's gone back to. Zoe has received some nerfs, uh, and we'll see if they actually decide to pick that one up, because Cassiopeia does provide plenty of AP, especially towards that late game, with both these teams having their eyes towards those late game team fights. And right now, the Trundle lock-in, I absolutely love this, because now you really have no idea, except that the Trundle is probably in the jungle. Gragas can't go top or support, and then the Rise can also be a top laner, so they could, if you pick a Cassiopeia, pick a hard counter to it and maybe even just flex their draft for TSM. Yeah, Trundle, though, in isolation, did get nerfed recently. Uh, is going to have a difficult time early on with the Olaf. Plus, 100 Thieves already have a Gangplank, so they're not going to run a true tank here for the Trundle Ultimate to get a lot of value out of. Yeah, it's a little interesting because they wouldn't be able to kind of go for these heavy ganks. It does moderately contest the Olaf, uh, especially since if he uses his ultimate, he loses some resistances. So you can put him down a bit if you ulti him before he ulties, but that's about it. So I like it for being able to contest in the early game, but I don't like it because it's not going to play into, like you said, against the tank to trundle strengths. Well, pretty standard end of the draft here for 100 Thieves. Syndra for Ryu and Rakara on Jin. as we'll see what TSM have around it. Again, we've Kind of praised a lot of these flex picks, but TSM again working towards something here on the red side. Zillion certainly an option, but we'll see what they do when I lock in. Yeah, I think the Zillion would make a lot of sense up against the Syndra being able to alter yourself, negate her ultimate, and then this becomes a very magic damage heavy composition. But if somebody stacks MR, Tron will be able to take a lot of that away. As well as the possibility here for Sven, probably going to run the more AD heavy build with Kaisa to even that out for the team. Well, there you go. Once again, Hanser will be in the top lane rise, trying to push in this gangplank, take advantage of him early, get a lot of damage there, uh, and we've seen him utilize it in the lane phase very effectively. I think both teams are pretty well set up to play in late game, which is where we expect things to go. If people are expecting a five-game series, expect five pretty long games between these two teams. I'm watching the bottom lane in particular here. Rakara in for 100 Thieves. A Gangplank usually symbolizes bottom lane focus with the ultimate. But then TSM have a lot of tools to help out Sven, give him the ultimate, the Chrono Shift from the Zillion from Bjergsen, but also a Gragas versus a Jin. Every Body Slam flash into a cask should be a kill on that guy. Yeah, I mean, 100 Thieves talked about trying to gather information in game number one. In Champ Select, at least TSM haven't shown anything new. They have utilized all these picks before. Mid lane Zillion, Gragas even on support and top lane Rise. So we'll have to get onto the Rift and see how they play it out. Well, we'll see what happens here. But I think also looking at the junglers, Grig has been pretty defensive, kind of counter-attack oriented jungler most of this split. But Anda has actually added quite a bit more aggression to the Hunted Thieves side since joining about mid split. And on something like Olaf, which has consistently been banned away in these games, I am expecting him to maybe give 100 Thieves a bit more of a robust early game. And we can even see a level one here. Alstar plus Jin on level one. Uh, Olaf, is, as soon as you see the Olaf there, you have to respect the axes and the undertow. There's definitely a possibility coming out firing in game number one. Well, let's see what happens here. Oakland start to come alive as 100 Thieves versus TSM will kick off in game number one. No time to think about tomorrow, no time to think about next week and what is coming in that weekend. It is just this best of five. And I'm loving it so far. The TSM chants are coming alive, and it has been TSM's uh, worst year to date. This is the first time that they have played in front of a large audience of this size all year, when before they used to make it to every event, the chance would be out in force. This is the first time that they have that in 2018. See Sunday and Hanser though, just squaring off. See how that matchup develops in a little bit. But it looks like no one's taking too many risks here. So it is good to mix it up sometimes, but they'll play pretty standard here. Carry top lane matchup. We have supports in the bottom lane with plenty of crowd control set up as well as the mid lane. So it really does feel like there are a lot of options for these junglers and the early game, how your jungler works with the rest of your team, especially you know communicating with your mid laner early on is going to tell a lot. First step in this process for pro games is always 
getting wards down in the river to see the scuttle crabs and try and figure out the first route of your opponent. And something that I'm a little concerned about here, like you talked about the mid lane, is Bjergsen has the teleport. Ryu has heal as the Syndra against the Zillion. And I don't feel like it's a matchup where that's something that you really care about a whole bunch. Things like Ignite, uh, even just having maybe Barrier, which is lower cooldown, or Teleport yourself, maybe you're more useful here. I wonder what Ryu is really scared of here in this matchup that would make him take heal. Yeah, speed, the speed boost of the heal could help you dodge out uh, on a little bit of the zoning of the bombs, and maybe it will be good later for a 5-on-5 five -five situation since the AD carries. Uh, both these marksmen haven't taken the heal. Those could be two possibilities. We also have a bunch of ghost portals, by the way. Yeah. Uh, new mastery, very effective. Love it. That we see for some more early vision up on the top side there from 100 Thieves. Yeah, I love it so much because it's so hard to just cover both scuttles without it. And I think it helps your jungler figure out what side the other jungler's on and then get at least one scuttle. Especially when they have the Olaf, they have the possibility of going for some very aggressive early game moves. Meanwhile, on the top side, decent trade early on. Uh, and they both do have uh, the refillable options, corrupting potion there for someday, and refillable for Hauntzer, plus their teleports. Same in mid lane as well. So expect a lot of trading here between Bjergsen and Ryu. So you can kind of outlast the other with their corrupting potion and inspiration secondary. But again, I think in a lot of these lanes, expecting mostly Ooh. some farming. Although Ryu, again, going to get aggressive, try and dodge it out. Good speed up there. The bombs will follow. Stun lands, bit of harass. And in the dodging game, Zillion here with the extra speed. Bjergsen able to get the better of that trade. As you mentioned, though, they both have Time Work Tonic and their Inspiration Secondary for the extra you know, health gain from their Biscuits and Corrupting Potions. Yeah, we just got to watch Ryu's Mana Pool. It's a little bit on the lower side. He doesn't have Teleport. Bjergsen does. So as Bjergsen starts controlling this lane a little bit more, you see Ryu already makes it back for a Dark Seal as soon as possible. And while we're here down in the bottom lane, we should definitely talk more about Rikara. It's been crazy ride for him. He was just immediately put in very high pressure situation in the playoffs, uh, you know, playing for 100 Thieves. And here, he's already in his finals, uh, or basically here at Oracle's yep. finals weekend. And he already is performing decently down there with Aphromoo. They have a lot of kill potential. You know, Alistar, WQ, Jin Roots could follow up. So any sort of jungle awareness that goes down to the bottom side could be a big setup. Yeah, and we're talking about these guys who it's their first time in front of this enormous crowd. Rikara, and uh, Grig, definitely pressure on them. But if you're sitting there as Rikara, the person you want by your side is the Afro move, the spring split MVP, the leader of the team to give you confidence, tell you everything's okay. Even back when Double Lift kind of was groomed by him to basically be told what to do in lane. I feel like if you're gonna play ADC and be thrown onto the stage, Afro is the guy you want right next to you. Pretty good babysitter as it turns out, both in and out of game. Sometimes he leaves you for, you know, the mid lane That's to go fun. gank, but. You know what? Sometimes a lot, of, a lot going on. <laughs> can be a tough job as Bjergsen is getting away, pushed in here in mid. That has gone back and did not burn teleport, so still has the option to make his way back. In the meantime, here in top lane, Sunday starting to get it pushed in. Haunter again, mostly gated by mana, but has the tier to kind of push these waves back as much as he can. And so far, we have a very slight lead uh, in jungle experience for Anda. Right now, Sunday on the run, though. Is. Yeah, the orange is, but out of mana does have his flash. Jungler is coming, but it's on the TSM side. But Grig, not really an angle to start something as and a dip pop predator is going to run towards the trundle, but not going to throw the axe. Just take the crab. Yeah, and really it wants, really wants the crab there. It already started to come up, and that's where everybody's kind of converging towards the top lane. You see that yellow marker on the map. That's the one you want. And someday has TP. So even if they did start a fight, Hauntzer has pressure on him to clear this bigger wave. And back to the top side by the looks of things. So we'll see if he does get something started. TSM, they do have vision in the area. Someday they're going to press forward and actually clear out this control ward. And they're doing the same just on the left side. So all of a sudden, Haunter went feeling, was feeling pretty safe in those trades. Now has no vision right now. They're likely going to have to TP back with no mana. This calm early game going in the favor of 100 Thieves so far. Farming away very nicely. Again, the jungle lead is pretty decent here for the Olaf. Should be able to have priority in those meetups. Now he's got this level lead that he's working with. Ryu in the mid lane as well. Uh, even though some of the trades look like Bjergsen was getting the better of the dodging, Ryu has the slightly better last hits. And you think back to 100 Thieves versus Team Liquid in the semifinals, 
Anda, the Poppy jungle, up against Xmithy. He was able to actually out-jungle Xmithy the first two games. They won the first one off of this enormous lead. The second one, they weren't able to close, but Anda, somebody who has pathing down and knows how to kind of join up with his lanes, especially someday in Ryu from what we've been seeing. Again, especially with the nerfs to Trundle, as far as the Q, a little bit less damage for him, a little bit less dueling potential. So you do have to play it a bit more safe there early on and don't want to fight that Olaf heads up just yet. Here we go, though. They are heading towards the bottom lane pre-6. Jungle Recall actually just does go off, so more farming will return. Kind of indicating the pace of the game as well. We see this a lot from Sven, but both he and Rakara have TP on their bot laners, and it looks like they've already both gone back and bought a BF sword. Ricardo though, did use his teleport, Sven did not, so they're gonna have a little bit more freedom as Afrin we may be trying to brush play here, but TSM, their bot lane in general is very good at neutralizing lanes. I think it's one of the reasons they pick stuff like Kaisa Gragas so often. Yeah, it feels though like 100 Thieves are playing to the top side of the map. You just look at control ward locations, Dragon seems to be on the table for him, playing towards the lane that has the new guy in Rikara in it. But then the top side, 100 Thieves have three control wards to kind of spot out anything and keep someday safe, because then he can contribute to the bottom side with Cannon Barrage. Gragas is also pretty good at stuffing the Alistar engages, and Mithy will have a lot of opportunity uh, to try and deny Afro move uh, those uh, big openings that he's looking for. So far, though, should just be a blue handoff here for Ryu in the mid lane. And Ryu, this guy, he has done such a big job for 100 Thieves in getting them here, uh, you know, to this very position in their tiebreakers, you know, getting them through the early games in which they hadn't really had a lot of priority to their comfort area. And now he's making a decent play here on Bjergsen. Yeah, he's going to try and get an ulti. Does grab it, spear down on the ground, and then pops it away. Ryu might be able to land a follow-up stun, but Bjergsen too much health as he comes out of the revive, but now the pressure's really on. Yeah, the pressure's on. He's calling up Anda right now. This gives them priority to Drake. This gives them an ability to... Oh, not stunned in turret range. Yeah, didn't get him in turret range, but Ryu, with that ultimate trade and pushing Bjergsen back, he did deny a couple of CS, plus forces that teleport out of Bjergsen. Greg is on award, so it should be 100 Thieves with more information here. 2v2 right now, but... Ryu just runs away, does have his flash ready. Greg does enter mid lane and show himself. Potential for a dive bottom lane. And you'll see TSM's bot lane is going to have to back up here in just a second because Ryu and Anda actually both in a good position. As a result, that means actually Greg trying to face check, but Anda already going to get onto him after Ryu followed up with a stun. Might be a fight here, but Ragnarok popped by Anda. Mithy also around the side, but Afro has joined the fray as well, looking for a 3v3. Now Rakari here, there's the stun. Lends in onto Ryu, but no follow-up there for TSM. Yeah, TSM did not have Zven rotate over, so they were down one person in the possible fight here in the river. That's why they did not try and chase 100 Thieves any further. Zven just farming away, and he will be able to push out that lane on bottom. Yeah, it's still very beneficial for TSM to be able to push them out and actually force the Syndra to go around, and that actually almost evens the CS up in the mid lane as some of it dies to the turret. But now they can be inside track on that Drake. Yeah, you could also see the difference in the smites there. The challenging smite for Grig helped him win that duel. Drake gonna go down though, and he should be able to hit this one. Yeah, Afro gonna try and get it off. Grig able to get the smite on, but maybe Afro can find a combo. Flash at the ready is Ryu took a chunk from Bjergsen's bomb, so he's gonna kinda call off the play. Bjergsen thinking about canceling that recall, but takes the wave instead. Yeah, take the wave, get the next one, because the Syndra doesn't have teleport or to use the heal. And I, it's interesting, whenever somebody's playing against Syndra, you either see an early Merc Treads or you see them grab uh, a Null Magic Mantle. But with the Zillion, you don't really have to do that. You can go and dip into the Catalyst, get that HP, go for the Rod of Ages, and that's how you survive the matchup at the level six. And he has the ultimate to kind of help him with that too. So the counter pick a little bit paying off here where you don't have to fear the Syndra as much. And even your team doesn't have to fear it that much, not just the matchup. And meanwhile, even though 100 Thieves do have this gold lead, most of the gold lead is on the Olaf and the Gangplank from Gangplank's extra you know, source of money coming in uh, from the parlay. And it is kind of a difference in trading the Ocean Drake here for a couple of extra camps. Grig though, We'll be able to five Anda, and uh, Scuttlecraft Control should go over to 100 oh. Thieves. He looks like he wants to try and smite, though. Done lands. Grig trying to find something there. Good pillar. Zones off Ryu. Bjergsen also throwing bombs over the ledge. So Grig is going to secure this. Yeah, someday there. This time around is the one farming at his turret. With Ponser moving down, he allows Grig to get that Scuttlecraft and balance out some of the gold difference. It's something that 
we got to touch on here is Aphromoo actually had a decent gold lead over his opponent. And it was something that uh, a lot of people don't track on supports, but he's actually about 160 gold up via support item, has completed his support quest early, and Mithy is now going to complete his if he gets one more charge. He's like four gold away, it'll tick over. But this means Aphromoo is out on the map with full wards ready to go in his sight stone, and Mithy doesn't have that luxury just yet. And even better than wards, Aphromoo's got mobility boots for Alistar, so he could look to make a play. They've already cleared out vision on the bottom side of this mid lane here. Uh, with Andam making a pass, so that would be one route that's possible for him. However, it's very difficult to make that big play onto a zillion unless Bjergsen uh, gets a little over aggressive with his positioning. With the Drake down though, it seems like Topside might be the play, although 100 Thieves thinking about that dive here. Still nice ward though from TSM. It's going to spot three moving through, so Afro roams in, gets that deep ward down. And looks like 100 Thieves will continue playing relatively slowly. And you can see Mithy, he went back, sat in the base for a bit, it gives you one gold every 10 seconds towards it. He was at two gold away. And so he waited 10 seconds, walked out, didn't have wards, walked back in. Now he has wards again. So he's actually hasn't been in lane for about 30 seconds now. See, Honsa though still pushing it on to someday. And Sven is playing appropriately safe down a little CS right now. But Stormraise has finished on both, feeling pretty comfy. Is Honsa going to turn things back around? Phase Rush gonna proc, getting good damage there onto Sunday. You held onto those oranges, actually didn't have them, does have them back up right now. Yeah, he's not too scared. He has the oranges, he has the biscuits as well to just heal himself up. And with the grass a uh, lot safer, stacking up HP over the course of the game, constantly firing off those parlays on Hauntzer, trying to get some more health for himself to work with later. As long as he doesn't get bursted down early on in the game. He should be able to farm up, and his Trinity Force now comes in. And you can see that pressure that Hauntzer had. Oh, and is actually going to get it. Nice yep. might does get it away. Reckless Swing combined with Smite should be enough true damage to always win those if you time it very well. He's actually not even stopping in the mid lane to go pick up that cannon minion. Uh, and it's going to allow the tower to take it down, allow a little bit more time for Ryu to get there. Scuttle, enemy blue buff that you have the timer of. If your bot lane shoves, you can invade, and you just saw the Bjergsen back. So if Syndra pushes mid, you can start getting priority on this side of the map. So having a little pit stop mid, oh, not worth it this. for him. All right, and they're going to play it safe. Does wait out under the barrel. Ryu also has his loot and finish. So 100 Thieves feeling pretty confident as they pressure through mid and fade right hand side. Here's that blue you mentioned. Yeah, they're trying to go for the invade once again. Rakara is in lane, but he's long range here on Jin. And it's the old Syndra Yoink. <laughs> First has done Bjergsen, but Bjergsen just waiting it out, throwing some auto attacks in there with the bombs. Mid lane priority. Bjergsen has the inside track, so he's kind of keeping two people over there. Should be a good defense here for TSM after the reset and the mid pass mid, and they will be able to secure their own blue buff. Uh, will he be able to hand it off though? It looks like it's going to Greek instead, and Bjergsen can tell he's already fairly low on mana, but he does have a catalyst for himself in addition to you know plenty of consumables. Yeah, that's the payoff of the invade there from 100 Thieves, is it doesn't go over to Bjergsen, so you have a mismatch of you have Ryu with the blue, or sorry, you have Anda with the blue, and then it made it so that you wanted to invade so that you didn't have that where it was a blue advantage for Bjergsen and you're able to just have the junglers kind of go even there. Nice there from Mithy. Immediately respects the Afro playmaking. Was recalling. I'm not sure if he wanted to complete it or not, but if he did, just walks away as soon as Afro enters that brush. So it does feel like at least the pushing pressure is in their advantage right now, but all teams just kind of farming things out right now. And a much better game from Makar here. It's about to press 15 minutes. Hold on, and... Uh... Caught in the jungle, has ulti though. Oh, Ragnarok is going to be blocked off a little by the pillar, but Greek can't really chase. And that is a big cooldown. If you can burn the Olaf ultimate over and over again, removes a lot of that pressure that he can bring. His uh, Predator is up, Flash is up, so he would definitely be looking for something offensive, but nice little quick invade there from TSM. Allows them to force the jungler off the map and probably secure that Rift Herald for themselves, especially considering the deeper vision that they left behind in that quick little invade. Yeah, so they'll see him start walking up. You can see Hauntzer is already pressuring. And this Rise matchup oh. to the Gangplank, quite good, but look at this. Predator Rush back out go. onto the map, though. Anda doesn't want to give it up, and they know what's going on. Oh, oh Realm Wolf actually going to try and cut him off. Hauntzer, though, does not take it. Instead, they zone the away. They take the Rift Herald TSM. Just enough pressure to secure that objective. Even though Anda has an inkling that this is going on, runs in, and because they burned his ult previously, now they take his 
Rift's Flash, and they still get the Rift Herald. Yep, they get the Rift Herald. They'll try to convert it into a turret, but this counter matchup that they were able to flex around and have this Rise versus the Gangplank, sure, you think, oh, we can get out of the route, but there's just so much damage. You don't build a lot of magic resistance here on the GP, and you're just in a spot where you're constantly shoved in, and you scale alongside. Possible play here from 100 Thieves, though. Aphromoo taking a look at the top side, along with Anda. Uh, maybe they're trying to bait Hunter in a little bit here. Onsa being patient, there they are over the wall, Hush begins, Onsa gonna try and book it out of there, does do good damage to Sunday, but Afro is lining up the play for first blood, there's the knockback, straight into the wall, followed up by the pulse, and goodbye, Sunday gonna go first blood, but here's Mithy, cask over, does follow up with the body slam, but Ryu's still living. Yep, Ryu is able to use his heal before the Ignite gets on him, I believe, for the extra health that comes through, doesn't have to use his flash, even with the mid gank, uh, TSM, they do give up first blood, and it goes over to uh, someday huge, huge plays for 100 Thieves. They might even just get that first turret bonus gold, but TSM get Drake number two. Still, that's a lot of gold going on to someday in the top lane in a matchup that Hauntzer was pressuring. Hauntzer was trying to get the better of it. Afro Moop walked up so that he didn't have his headbutt flashed away from was perfect play there and very calm well is a bit of a trade there as tsm are able to get that bottom turret greg though maybe in a little too deep does have mithy behind him right now though after the reset here we're gonna have desync side lanes and everybody's coming mid yep afro me now gonna get pillar back in looks for the follow-up bubble body slam is out afro gonna pop on breakable will to try and stay alive a little longer so cool down there for tsm but not a whole lot else yeah better for afro to use his ultimate then flash away. Definitely want that flash for a big play like we just saw from him on top side. And this is uh, TSM trying to go for three turrets. They got the one bottom, they rotate Sven mid, they use the Rift Herald, and then the top lane is being shoved right now by Hauntzer. And that could be the last outer turret going as we see here the Acer Predator replay starts with Afromu playing this beautifully, walking up instead of using the W for a flash. And this is why everyone always cites Aphromoo's playmaking with this squad. 100 Thieves up to the top side along with Anda. They're patient and they wait just long enough for Hauntzer to move up with the minion wave into the turret range and secure that kill. Plus, that's what got them the first turret bonus. Yeah, and now you have someday running around with a thousand gold lead over this matchup with the Rise. Now has the Trinity Force. Looks like he's gonna go a little defensive here for his next item though. TSM though are trying to pressure on this top side of the map. You said it already with the Rift Herald after they got mid, are looking to take down the outer ring if they can. So a lot of activity here on the left hand side. But 100 Thieves are uh, pretty easy move to read and they've been good in their defense so far. I was trying to figure out what Someday's going for. I think it's a spirit message for more healing from his W. But also, we talked about at the start, magic damage pretty much across the board for TSM. Yeah, we've seen it definitely quite a few times there for the game playing. Also buffs up uh, your citrus eating value. Under these actually getting pushed out of their own jungle here. As you said, this is going to be the third tower that goes down. TSM taking the full outer ring. After the first blood, there are four 100 Thieves turning it around on them fairly quickly. Yeah, and, and Baron's in 30 seconds here to be on the map, which is going to be a constant pressure point for them, because TSM still had that mid turret, they still had that bottom turret up. So as 100 Thieves look to kind of knock those turrets down, they have to commit resources to that side of the map. And you can see Baron is completely dark for 100 Thieves, whereas TSM has control. Well, you mentioned Baron, especially when the Raid Blade is now finished for the Kai'Sa. Certainly a big possibility there for TSM. Ricaro, though, finishing up some of the busy work here in bot lane. We'll take down this outer turret and get things going in towards the tier two. So a lot of trades here in these last few, and it is a gold lead up for 100 Thieves, but not by much. Yeah, that's a gold lead for 100 Thieves. Being down a tower as well. So if they can actually regroup around this mid lane, have someday continue to side lane push, and be able to get some more ground for themselves, they definitely have a good look here. Post 20 minutes. This is what we've been building to all game long for this season. <laughs> Actually, someday now. Oh, Zen flushed in. Yeah, he's going to try and make something happen. Cannon Barrage to try and protect himself. Someday, though, does get over the wall, but Spang to fall with the killer instinct. The Bjergsen, he's ready to go. Bottom lane, though, haunts a goodbye. So both top laners <laughs> get caught out here on opposite sides of the maps and go down almost simultaneously. They pay the price for their teams. And this is gonna be a pretty even draw. Yep, they both use flashes, they both die at the same time, they both give over kills. They still keep their teleports though, so they can get back out onto the map. But right there, that was 
pretty all over the place. Some days backing in the middle of the lane on the side that TSM has control of. We talked about it earlier, all their wards are here, they have the control. Flashes the loving arms of Bjergsen who gets the kill. And on the opposite side, it looks like Hauntzer is just chasing Rikara, goes towards the red buff, and then there's Anda there who's conveniently doing the buff as he walks by. Yeah, Hunter sees Rikara, the new guy on the squad, thinks that it's gonna be an easy pickoff for himself, but Anda is there to help him out and they take down the TSM top laner. And Rikara's been doing quite well in this game. He was up in terms of CS at 15 minutes, first time that he's done that so far. We saw he was negative 31 in his four matches against Double Lip, and so this matchup with the Gangplank top helping him out whenever he can in terms of pressure with the ultimate, it feels like it, it's a bit of an easier time for Rikara in this game. He doesn't have that constant pressure on him because TSM aren't really throwing resources towards the bottom side. Oh, the true test is now going to come in the mid game and in the team fighting as your positioning will be so incredibly important against a team like TSM are fielding here. There's so many AOE abilities that you have to dodge with the Gragas engage coming through. Trundle Pillar is going to be making that difficult. So we will see you know, how these mid game setups actually turn out. Right now, they have Zven split pushing with the Kaisa. It's actually a decent split pusher, uh, especially with the Marksman now taking teleports. Yeah, and if you jump in on her as she's doing a minion wave, she already has the fully stacked Rage Blink. So her dueling power is a little bit higher than most people expect. But something that he's trying to do is catch Rikara. Rikara has the highest CS in the game. He's 257 at 22 and a half minutes. So he's farming incredibly well. So they have to devote resources to Sven to kind of stay in tow. Minty, they're going to try it onto Afro, but just a bit of harass and nothing really more. Bjergsen fishing for bombs that's not going to grab them. As there's the W finds Afro there from Sven, but doesn't dare pop the killer instinct in for the rest of the team. One thing I do like about the overall pressure there for TSM is they've got two Drakes already and now looking for the mountain that has respawned and Sven already got the wave pushing in top lane. Yeah, we see down bottom they keep wrestling back and forth. Or poke onto Afro Moon too. Every little bit of damage you can chip away at this Alistar definitely going to help set up this dragon fight because there are two Ocean Drakes on TSM so they regenerate any sort of damage that is dealt beforehand. Yeah, they regenerate. They already have the mid turret down and 100 Thieves don't so they can push that wave further and just beneficial. Remember the minions actually get buffed up a little bit per turret that's down in that lane so the minions are a little stronger and will auto push. And watch what TSM are doing. You pull off the dragon, Haunter is still pushing bottom. So it forces 100 Thieves to be the ones in the high pressure situation here, cornered with the dragon, losing minions on bottom side. One by Afro, Mithy in though, does get a pulverize in, but it's Mithy gonna pop the stopwatch. TSM though trying to rush down the Drake. Bjergsen looking to zone them away with the bomb. Spike goes through, it is Greg that grabs it. And now in the middle of the team, it's Anda, goes down the Haunter. Great ult there from Mithy on the Gragas. Knocked Sven. him in. Sven goes in too. Sven straight in with the Killer Instinct. There's the ult out from one as Haunts are Realm Warped into two. Someday though, getting a little threatened, but not too bad. Defensive counter barrage keeps Ooh. alive. Good battle chain up to Afro. Finds the pole rise in the other side as Mithy is able to go down. That's the punch of Rikara. And Sunday grabs the double. Now Sven has Rikara to has turn ulti. tail and run. That Zillion ult timed out and there's only a tiny sliver of health on Sven so he had to dodge all these wards so he doesn't get sniped afterwards but look at the confidence someday turns it around with the gangplank ultimate and barrel chain Rikara flashing forward to secure the kill for his team it does not look like 100 Thieves are having any problems. And I couldn't get there at the start of the fight, but Ryu sets up the back end of the play. But let's watch this one again. All right, Ryu. so in the Dragon, we have an early stopwatch here from Mithy to delay. Now Grig does get the smite, but look at Mithy's barrel. Knocks the Olaf all the way in. And even with your ultimate pop, it actually just takes down your resistances and you die quicker. Sven, though, jumps in on Kaisa, knowing that he's going to have the Zillion ult, but he doesn't get killed, so he has to get out of there. Oh, hold on, we can't go over the rest of it. Yeah, don't worry about that, here's Mithy running away from three members of 100 Thieves. We also have Sven pushing up top, so 100 Thieves know they got to push through and pressure off this Baron. And even though 100 Thieves do have the 4-2 to two kill advantage, TSM got the objective once again. TSM have gotten every single drag in this game, as well as the Rift Herald, with 100 Thieves having the slight gold lead and now trying to pressure the tower. But there's more towers for them to take, right? Getting this middle turret would put them even further up in gold and they have those side lanes that can push out, but TSM, the Ocean Drakes, help out immensely when you're in those siege situations. And Sven, just picking up that side lane farm. This will put him up in CS over Rikara for one of the first times in the game. Yeah, he's only getting stronger as well. Kaisa scales so well as the game gets later. 
working on item number three. You can see the gold difference. Sven is actually currently ahead of Rakara as far as 1v1 gold between the two goes. And Bjergsen doing an adamant job protecting this turret. 100 Thieves. They're so good around the map, but they don't have too much map to move on right now. Yeah, especially with the Hail of Blades, we've seen Rakara have so much damage on that four shot coming in with the burst. And it is so much about the setup. As both these teams are talking about, it's this mid-game team fights and how they're going to be able to get positioning and vision in order to get the engagement. Yeah, and that's who I'm always watching here is Mithy's engaged, Aphromoo's engaged, even Double if or not Double if, sorry, Bjergsen talked about it at the start where he was saying, hey, it's about the engagement. We're pretty similar in terms of team. We just have to team fight a little bit better than them and wait for those engages to come through. So I'm watching the engagers here, especially Aphromoo and Mithy. Well, something that does spark that very often is the Baron on the table. 27 minutes in, a Scuttle Crab is about to come up in this area. And so far, TSM have had the better vision control. Slightly deeper wards, clearing out a lot of the 100 Thieves wards so that they don't know if they're on Baron or not. It's causing a lot of these kind of scared plays where they need to gather more information. Yeah, and we're seeing them go and check, and Grig caught out. He does have Flash. Yep, W actually just going to get dodged. Nice there from Grig using the Frozen Domain. Oh. Afro gets tagged, but no that rush in the Nikai Cell. Oh, goodbye, Scuttle Crab. Yeah. Well, that's one way to get vision for yourself. Bring the Scuttle Crab on <laughs> to your territory and take it down. Split push still going strong there for TSM, where Haunter on the bottom side trying to pressure, though, uh, while the rest of 100 Thieves defend in mid lane. I'm going to rush back out and try and counter push the mid lane, but. TSM were hoping to apply pressure to somebody who, remember, is still very strong at this stage of the game. Both their crew and soul lane is actually, actually uh, set up to play a pretty pivotal role in this late game. Yeah, and I like that he went for the Storm Razor. Third item, got a little defensive in the middle there, but this will allow him to hit those squishies very hard. And then also, you look at Sven's build, very team fight oriented. TSM sent two people bottom, and they still have priority in mid lane, chasing off 100 Thieves here. Uh, 100 Thieves trying to take out the vision, though. Again, they were they were far behind in the vision game, so they took that opportunity to try and get uh, the wards back for themselves. In the cost, though, another tower goes down. So now TSM with a four tower to two lead. Yeah, and I like that they brought Sven and Haunter there because they both have teleports. So if you started Baron, both those guys would be able to be in attendance, and there's no way for a GP to really interrupt it either. So TSM were using the summoner spells to their advantage, and now they have a gold lead of almost 1,000. Kais is such a great shadow for a split pusher like Ryze as well. So I like TSM again, kind of using all their tools. I think it's why when we see them draft stuff like Kaisa so early, you think, okay, isn't Kaisa's problem in lane? Well, yeah, but Sven is so good and so consistent with Mithy at getting through the lane that the options they give her in drop and in the game are more than worth that trade-off. Kai'Sa definitely going to have more sustained damage than the Jin in the team fight, but there is a very huge possibility of burst damage from Rakar from this Jin. He's on the three item spike. Infinity Edge has been completed. That being said, Sven with the added... Ooh, good flash there from Haunter. Good, but perhaps unnecessary. Haunter are a little too far forward. Does get himself out of there, though. Yeah, great reactions there. And that's what we were talking about earlier, where Aphromoo walked up last time to Haunter so that he couldn't do that type of move. But with the flash down, it means the next one is more likely to hit. Aphromoo has the flash available, so a flash pulverize or headbutt pulverize would hit Haunter. And so he's going to have to be a little more careful. All right. Will they be able to take down the Kai'Sa? Sven here does also have the Runon's Hurricane, can take down multiple members at the same time. And the Zillion ult will give him confidence to position much more aggressively in that team fight. Here we go, though, trying to fight up for Vision inside the river. Both big monsters are up, so it's actually a pretty key point as TSM first needs to defend and shove out mid lane. Afro, though, flash over the wall, finds one, but he's gonna get stunned up on the front side. Pops the unbreakable will to try and stay alive, but the damage may be enough. Spam with a W, he's able to pick him off, and now TSM are in a 5v4. And that seemed like a pretty half hearted commit there. Afro went in. Someday lays down no ultimate. There isn't really an ultimate either from Ryu can't reach. And so it's one where Aphromoo pulled the trigger on that, but other people weren't even holding the gun at that point. Also, the target there was Mithy on the support Gragas. Not the best target to want to use everything on. If you're going to want to get your chain stun and your gangplank ultimate down, the target is Ven. But here we go. Baron's at 8,000 and drop it quickly. Baron. Baron nice damage so that. strong. Yeah, exactly. There's the cannon barrage though. They used it now. See if they can get something done. Into the pick. Oh, no, no. He steals the Baron away from Grig. And now it's 
Ben caught in the pit, is trying to fight his way out. Oh. Pops the ulti, flashes over the wall to safety, but Haunter, maybe not so lucky. He's gonna be resurrected there as Bjergsen, gonna try and run something else here. Haunter, back with almost full HP by now. He's his turn to chase back under Akara, but he flashes out and barely misses getting body slammed. Ben the rest of the team, though, coming out of Sven, Divin to fall on the other side of the fight. Rikara tried to back away. Here's the rest of 100 Thieves. Sunday gonna try and keep fighting. Haunter down the ball and fight for Akara. Sweet for 100 Thieves. TSM lost their mind. They kept going for it. Grig, he walks up, but it doesn't matter. Anda is able to get in. Just ulti, flash it, not stopped at all. Gets the kill on it. And then Afromu's able to run back to this fight after he's the one that got picked off. This was a 4v5. And 100 Thieves steal the Baron. And uh, one of the mid-split changes for this team takes it away from Grig, who has been North America's strongest smiter this split. But Anda goes in with the Olaf, able to have the extra true damage with the Reckless Swing. Huge stage, huge performance, and 100 Thieves now with a huge lead. And I remember when Ando was back in Challenger, his name was Chirol, and everybody was like, oh, it's Cloud9 Balls' cousin. People don't even remember that anymore. He's just Ando. His own merits have started to make his own name for him. He doesn't have to care about his family or, or his, who's related to. He is his own player, and Ando is just showing up here. And on top of that, Rikara, the other new guy on the team, also making a name for himself right there with the escape able to dodge out from the TSM chase, and now they're at the TSM doors, taking down turrets left and right. It's a game that was played so carefully, but 100 Thieves dash all of their hope in one little smite steal. TSM starting to lose turrets. Now they're the ones down too, as 100 Thieves are up 6-2-4, and it's not stopping. Baron's still up for a minute. That was just so incredible that in this high pressure situation in their time of need. 100 Thieves do it without Aframu. Aframu not even there at the scene. And it's the new guys that are stepping up. Now, let's see if they can actually convert on this because the hardest step is ahead of them. Inhibitor turrets. TSM trying to mount their defense. TSM strategy now, try and use this small funnel at the turret to allow them to use a good Gragas ultimate and win the team fight. Maybe a catch on the Ando now popping the Ragnarok, but actually the damage is maybe enough here. Haunter still chasing, spit up by Bjergsen, looking for the pick off, they do grab it! And that's gonna mean they back up in the Baron buff. They're not able to crack the base with it, only 20 seconds left on it as they reset. And that's not enough here, they get one more wave, but I don't think they're gonna push with it. Yeah, someday trying to chase, but doesn't quite connect that combo onto Grig. So 100 Thieves will back away, reset, and go spend some gold, but TSM, they have stopped kind of the hard part of the Baron push here. They won't be happy that they lost their lead. 100 Thieves up pretty significantly after that, but they know the game is likely going to be played quite a bit longer, so they'll be happy not to lose inhibitors. Yeah, but if it goes on longer, Sven gets even more powerful at the five items right now, only has one more that he needs to buy for himself, and the Kai'Sa does an immense amount of damage. And then you also have this Rise that will just continue to scale as well. And so that's kind of the worry here for 100 Thieves is this is a 5,000 gold lead for them. Is that enough to counter these two big champions in the later parts of the game? It might be, but they still can't let up the pressure because it's not like TSM are flailing right now. They still are going back and forth. Well, currently, they actually have Ryu on the top lane. And again, this is a Syndra with no teleport uh, pushing, split pushing on there for them. So TSM know they have the numbers advantage for a few more seconds. And they're oh. taking it out on Afro. Good cost. Afro just eating a wall of damage. Last bomb is enough. Bjergsen able to get the kill again, despite the ultimate up for Afro. A lot of these stray kills here being picked up by TSM, picking off members of 100 Thieves and getting themselves right back in it. Yeah, and the way they kind of teased that kill where they were like, oh, we're just going to do some chip damage. Here comes a pillar a little bit after a little bit. And then 
by the time the Afro would actually use the ultimate, he had already been knocked back by the cast. He was already too far back, and he had already taken a lot of damage. As Bjergsen got caught right there, just used his Chrono Ship. Yeah, Bjerg actually close to ulti. The team is going to try and defend it, but Bjerg is going to get chunked down, and that finds the kill. But Haunter on the other side is looking to take down Ryu, who did have to flash away. Sven now can chase in, maybe take down someday. But Rikara is trying something. Greek needs oh! the cancel. Oh! Get the pillar, but the last bullet turns around. Takes down Mindy. Someday takes down Sven. With a trundle in his face, Rikara aims true, finds the shot to the back, gets Mithy, and that's three members of TSM down now. And Grig is on the run. It's just him and Hanser left to defend. And they're going to be able to push this right here. Where's the wave clear? It would be Hanser who's running towards the top side of the map. Rikara does a lot of damage to these turrets, and so does Someday and Ryu. Wave's too big on top side, so 100 Ds, they will crack the base, despite the Baron buff dropping off. And maybe even threaten for a little bit more. And is already starting that wave pushing in top lane. And they should be able to wear this one down as well. Aphromoo tanking up the turret. The two damage burn working away. That's going to be inhibitor number two for 100 Thieves. Back to back takes 100 Thieves. Find yet another team fight win in a pretty sticky situation. And are able to keep that gold in and keep up significantly in this game. And that shot that Kobe was talking about where it went right over Grig's shoulder. Grig also had used the Trundle Pillar at the same time. That was the last shot that he was going to get out of that clip there. Rikara was able to get it on the side, but right here, Ryu, they're able to pick off Bjergsen. Ryu survives, and then the chunk on Mithy, the last shot there with the Rapid Fire can increase the range. The first shot hits Grig, the second one over the shoulder, and then the ultimate's interrupted. Yeah, Mithy walk a little bit too far up into the river. Uh, not a straight line there with Brig, and he is taken down. But again, it all started off with Bjergsen getting caught, of all people, for TSM. Yeah, Bjergsen's been doing well in terms of CS this game. He had been ahead of Ryu the entire time, but getting caught there, blowing the chrono shift on himself. But that was after, once again, they had picked off Afro Mu. 100 Thieves without Afro Mu, 4v5, have been finding these fights and the counters. Well, Baron is back up, as you can see. Kind of the journey we've been on in gold. But 100 Thieves now know that this focus really has to be on this Baron number two. With two inhibs down, TSM have a lot of pressure coming from those super minions. So 100 Thieves' patience should pay off here. Someday just going to oh. chunk down mid. You're going to keep chasing. Pillar is there, but it's not quite enough to block an Afro. May have found a frontliner. Great rooted in the front side, but he's okay. As Mithy also got out of there. TSM have a very limited amount of time to try and play for a team fight. Elder Dragon also up in 20 seconds, so a lot of decisions to make here, and TSM don't have that much map right now. And I think the Elder Dragon is more concerning for 100 Thieves because trading the Baron for the Elder Dragon, TSM would be okay with that right now because they have three, and this game is coming down to those team fights, and with Mithy to engage them, you would be able to pick somebody else off. So 100 Thieves, even though they don't have a lot of Drakes, they just have that one Cloud Drake, they still have to worry about that Elder because it would be a large damage boost to TSM. Oh, here we go. Stun on to Grig to start it off. There's the follow up. Afro finds with the pulverize. Grig also able to use the ult, but maybe not going to live for that much longer. Chrono shift down. Grig, he needs to actually die. Does finally get resurrected. But 100 Thieves already diving into the backline. Is Ven eating a lot of damage? Horta trying to get Grig into the backline. Look to take them down. Is Ven cutting out of the way. Still alive. But now Ander going to run in with the Ragnarok. With Ven actually keep him in out of there. If the car takes a big jump, but he flashes over. Last bullet finds Ven, and that's him dead for 50 seconds. Ryu now gonna have to defend himself, he gets stunned! Afro though finds a double pulp though, bombs enough to Rikara's take down Ryu. The game. And now Afro, he's just buying time under Rikara, the new kids. They're gonna try and take down TSM in the first game here in the third place match. TP cancelled, Nexus dead! 100 Ds will take game number one. What an opener here at Oracle Arena. We have a zero death Rikara on stage for you. Someday remains undefeated in season eight on Gangplank. That is six and O oh for him. And 100 Thieves looking good. You can say you expect them to only play for mid and late game, but can you do anything about it? That's the big question here. Like you said, Someday 
13 KDA on that champion, highest KP by at least two on the team, did work and they couldn't shut down the GP. Absolutely incredible season for this guy so far. It has been kind of a reemergence for someday. But then like you said, Ricara, this guy came in and they said, hey, maybe game two, we'll figure out Cody's watching in the back. We'll use whichever AD is most suited for this match. Maybe you don't even swap. They said we want to gather some information. Well, you gathered some pretty good info, Ricara. No nerves, it looks like, and good performance on stage. Must feel nice for 100 Thieves to get a lot of work done without Afrimu. Not playing bad.